education, the active seniors. Retirement for us does not mean stopping to do things. You know what? We, many of us, are actually busier than ever. We volunteer. I know that a lot of you volunteer for Unlock because this is communal service, community service. You're giving back. You're fortunate. You're giving back to the community. We go on hikes. We dance. We travel. We get involved with our communities, all kinds of e events. And then with our grandchildren and children, take care of our grandchildren. Someone should really delete the word tired from retirement. We're not tired. We are active. So today, to celebrate Chinese New Year, I want to do three dishes. It has a lot of symbolic meaning. And also, it's very healthy and also very different and very, very uh, delicious, easy to do, okay? First, I want to do Sang Choi Bao. During Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year, not only the Chinese, but a lot of other Southeast Asian uh, people, friends of ours, also celebrate. That's why you call it Lunar New Year, where the New Year parade, we have all kinds of things. And always in every single Chinese restaurant, always serve Sang Choi Bao. Let us wrap with minced meat, but I elevate it, make it a little bit more interesting because we're so lucky to live in San Francisco Bay Area. A lot of seafood, a lot of produce, a lot of wonderful ingredient, fresh and seasonal. Look at that. You know why we do Sang Choi Bao? Look at this, beautiful lettuce cup. Sang Choi, Sang means to give birth, to grow. Choi means Lettuce, as well as good luck and good fortune. Choi means wealth. So when you serve these to your friends and neighbors and family during noon and New Year, you are offering them good luck and good fortune and a lot of wealth. That's the reason why this is very symbolic. That's why we choose Sang Choi Bao. Sometimes they use dry oyster and they use a, um, a, a fa choy, a ho si, but I use seafood. Or you can use minced meat. Look at that. This is an ingredient I have. Shrimp, whole piece, wonderful fresh shrimp. Salmon, because I want color. A lot of omega-3. Scallop, and I dice everything. And then also I have shiitake mushroom. Look at that. This is shiitake mushroom, fresh donggu, okay? And then I have carrot, onion, and zucchini. And also raisin, California, we're lucky. We live in California, a lot of raisin. This is dry raisin, you know, dry putu gan. And then the first thing with the, oh, if you have, you can also dye some fresh water chestnut. This is fresh water chestnut and onion and green onion. First, I'm gonna show you how to chop up with two things first, okay? Here I have dry mushroom, dry shiitake mushroom, fresh shiitake mushroom. This add flavor, this add texture and nutrient. As a senior, as senior, we should eat more um, fungus. That means mushroom, variety of mushroom, very healthy. So the first thing is you remove the stem, see? You use a scissor, remove the stem, cut the stem off like this, okay? Look at that, remove the stem. And then you use a knife to cut this up. I cut it one, two, and three, okay? Once you cut this up, you line them more up like this, and you go one, and a two, and a three. You can do dice pieces like this, look at that. And then you do the same thing with the dry one. One, two, and three. And then stack them all up. To save time, you stack them all up like this. And then you go one, and a two, okay? And then one more time. One, two, three, okay? Always want to knife properly. I hope you have used one of these Asian chef knives. After that, I put it right over here, okay? And then onion. This onion is very, also very healthy. Natural sweetness without adding sugar. And not only that, you got that wonderful aroma. Onion is also very healthy. So I slice it like that. Look at that. I see it like that. And then I cut it in half and then I dice it. One, two, three, four. There's everything is diced like this. Unbelievable. Look at onion dice. Now we have all these vegetables, but I like to have some color. So I would also 
use onion. So onion is a wonderful ingredient too. Like spice, 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 spice. See, 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 huh? This is onion. Give flavor and color to our dish. Now, once we have all these cut up, how about some seafood? Now I elevated this particular dish. This particular dish, not too many Chinese restaurants serve the lettuce cup with all of this beautiful, fresh seafood, a trail of seafood, sam sin, hoi sin, ha, dai ji, sam men yu, okay? And then I will show you, if you have a big prawn like this, you want to make a smaller dai, show you how to do it, okay? Let me show you. We use a knife, butterfly this, okay? Butterfly this, you cut it in half, okay? Look at that. You cut it in half, see that? So this way, when you cut it, it will be a lot smaller pieces on your dish, okay? I parallel cut, I cut this in half. You see the way I do it? I put my hand on top of the cut it, the, the, the knife. So I never cut myself, even I slip, because my hand is always on top, okay? And then you put it together. To save time, you do it together. One, and a two, and a three, and a four and a five. Now it's all cut up, okay? Now when this all cut up, you want to also cut up some wonderful salmon. Ah, you know what? Eat a lot of fish, particular salmon, omega-3, okay? Because normally we take um, cod, we take, take a, a vitamin pill, we take the cod, okay? Fish cod pill, you uh, gone yao, okay? And then when this all nice and ready, we show you how to marinate, okay? Here, I have a spoon. Always you get ready a spoon. And I have salmon. I have scallop, okay? And I have shrimp, okay? And I put them all together right here. And then we'll show you how quickly to marinate. Put a tiny bit of pepper, pepper, black pepper. And a tiny bit of wine. If you don't mind, you use wine. Otherwise, do not use wine. Okay, a tiny bit of cornstarch. Now that's the key, okay? Cornstarch is to help to seal the juice. What is Chinese? Yung cornstarch, gama. Cornstarch, go, the yet, gong liang di, to my ne, bao ju di zhap, mu ne di zhap la se sao zhe li. Seal in the juice, give the nice shiny glaze. And then also, ah, uh, the key is to make it really beautiful and juicy and smooth texture because the cornstarch turned into a gelatin. Right before you stir, now this is the professional trick, right before you stir, because you have cornstarch, they might get stuck. You put a tiny bit of oil. I use a very special healthy oil. I use a camellia tea seed oil and we'll show you later, okay? Now look at that. Use all the fresh ingredient. Cook with the fresh ingredient and good thing about this is you cook with a lot of vegetable. A senior, we eat enough seafood, particularly fish, and a lot of vegetable. You don't need to eat a lot of meat, okay? You do not need to eat a lot of meat. The key is, when you cook, you cook with less salt, less oil, and a lot of vegetable. Even though we're not a vegetarian, my sikjai, you go, different color. Look at the different color, okay? The more color, the more healthy. Look at all the color, okay? Then when it's done, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do stir fry. When I stir fry, I wanna show you what I use. I use this oil. Most of the cooking oil smoke very easily. Around 360 degrees, 375 degrees, they smoke. This is the oil. A lot of people from Taiwan know use, use this. A lot of people in Taiwan use this, okay? Because this is called camellia tea, san cha yao, the smoking point of this. 485 degree, 252 degrees centigrade, and also organic, natural, a lot of vitamin A, and also antioxidant, no cholesterol. So I use this, okay? I use only Little, little about a teaspoon or so, okay? 
this is really, really healthy oil. And I even sometimes rub it in my skin, my hand, as a hand lotion. This is the oil I use, okay? And then you can buy it in uh, Amazon.com. Now, I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna put this in. Oh, look at that. Now, this is the key. When you stir fry things, allow it to sear the meat and stew in the juice. If you want, use a tiny bit of garlic. Garlic is also very healthy. Let me show you how easy it is to peel garlic. Look at this. I put it right over here. We'll peel the garlic. One little whack and the whole garlic is peeled, okay? And I mince the garlic. I mince the garlic and I put it right over here. And I mince the garlic and I put it over here. Ah, this, this is how. Now, I am able to pause it. Now, when you do that, it will not get stuck. Look at that. Mmm, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Wow. Never overcook your seafood. And because I cut it up, it's very healthy. This is a wonderful dish by itself to serve over a lettuce cup, okay? All seafood without vegetables. When this is basically 80% done, I will remove it. I will remove it and cook the vegetables. Look at how beautiful. Look at that, beautiful. Ah, look at that. Look at this, okay? Then I put this over here, okay? Oh, look at that. Ah, done. Okay, and then I will cook the rest of the stuff right here. Look at that. I will put in mushroom, carrot, and zucchini, okay? And then raisin, I put them all together, okay? And then I put a tiny, tiny bit of water or broth. Oh, look at that. Oh, let me look at the steam. Look at them, let the steam cook. Let the steam cook the vegetable. A good chef, a good home cook, never overcook their vegetable. Okay? It preserves the nutrients, particularly vitamins. Vitamin C, very heat sensitive, okay? And then let it cook for a little while. If you want, you can literally cover this up. Okay, I cover this up like this. I cover this up. This way, you steam it. This way, you can use oil, uh, less oil. This is a good um, way to reduce the use of oil. All you have to do is cover it up with a tiny bit of moisture. If you like wine, put a tiny bit of wine, okay? Ah, look at that. Put a tiny bit of wine and let the wine aroma, the alcoholic aroma, infuse into the vegetable. But alcohol, dissipated, so you're not having too much alcohol, but you got the flavor of the wine, okay? Now, never overcook. This is basically done. One crunchy vegetable, retain the texture, the color, and the nutrient. Look at that, beautiful, amazing, okay? And then I put this seafood back. Oh, look at that, okay? And then, now look at that. Oh, now final flavor, very simple. Put a tiny bit of hoisin sauce or chi hao sauce. I use this, I use this, look at this. Oyster sauce and chi hao sauce. This oyster sauce, put it right here, right over here, okay? Because I already have a tiny bit of salt, so I do not have to use too much. I want to show you how to thicken the dish, okay? Now, look at that, beautiful. Mm, look at how colorful. This is actually a dish. This is actually a dish by itself, okay? Look at that. Mmm, beautiful. Look at how beautiful this is. And then you can actually thicken it up a little bit. Let me show you. I want to make sure you how to make a sauce. You put the water or the broth here, okay? And then you mix one portion of cornstarch mm -hmm. to three portion of water, okay? And you push it right in the middle where the boiling liquid is. Can you see this? Now the liquid is right here, right? The sauce. You thicken it right here, right in the middle. That's all you need. And then you toss. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, oh. 
And then if you want final touch, a tiny bit of extra wine, which I like, leftover wine. When this is done, you can serve. Let me show you how to serve this, okay? Now, this is basically done. Look at that, beautiful. I wanna show you. Beautiful, look at that, okay? Just the right amount of sauce. Now, this is how we serve it. Chef Yan, actually, there is a question from the uh, from the audience. They want to know, uh, do you add salt to the vegetables before or after the, you cook, after the cooking? Well, if you want to, if you're senior, you want to reduce the use of salt. I did not add salt, okay? The reason is when you add salt, it's a lot of salt. When you add soy sauce, or salt, only about 17% or less of that sauce is salt. So I want to add flavor, but not too much salt. So using soy sauce is actually better than using salt directly, okay? So that means you use less salt, okay? Now, this is how I will serve. I, will serve. I have a spoon here. I have a spoon here. I have a lettuce cup. I have all these lettuce already right here. Then I will put this right over here. Look at that, beautiful. And before you do that, you can also use a tiny, tiny bit of hoisin sauce, a chi hao sauce, to put it on the bottom of the lettuce. Let me show you. Here is a lettuce cup. You put or hoisin sauce, put it right here. Look at that. That's how you do it. And then you're ready to serve. And then when you serve, let me show, let me show you. Beautiful. Look at that. This is amazing. And then since it's new year, firecracker. Look at how beautiful, okay? And then the rest of these, I put it here. The rest of these, I put it over here. So this way, everybody can enjoy. Look at that, this is, we can serve three or four cups. Look at how beautiful. Look at that, huh? I'm not kidding, it looks so beautiful. In the meantime, this is dish number one. I have four or five of these lettuce cup here. I put it over here. And this is the very fancy lettuce cup that you do not normally see in most Chinese restaurants because they normally use ground pork or ground beef or ground chicken. But I use a trail of seafood, sam xin, ha, dai ji, salmon yu, amazing, okay? So, let us talk about New Year, okay? Why we are setting up for the second dish. During Chinese or Lunar New Year, every single household in a Chinese household or every single Chinese restaurant will have one of these lu yao, pomelo. Lu yao means, sounds like abundance, plentiful supplies. When you have one of these in your kitchen, in your business, you have abundance, plentiful of good luck and good fortune. That's the reason why you always have this. And along with this, you always have orange, mandarin orange or tangerine because they're in the color of gold. I remember when I was living in Asia, when I visit friends and relatives and neighbors with and of even colleagues, all my boss, I always, when I go and visit them, I always bring along orange and mandarin orange because this is in the color of gold. You are taking, you are giving them gold, bringing gold to their household. That means you're bringing them good fortune and good luck and wealth. That's the symbol. And of course, everybody knows, this is my last name, Yan. Yen. You put money into the red envelope, okay? And then you give it to your children, grandchildren, or anybody still single. All the adult, all the married couple always give money to the single people or the children to wish them good luck, okay? And then later on, I'll come back, we'll talk about other things, including the Ningo and the Shen Lin Tong Go, the New Year candy, and the Chinese New Year cake, okay? Now, the next dish. Look at that. 
we want to show you how to cook something healthy for seniors. As I mentioned, my daily diet is I eat a lot of vegetable, a lot of vegetable. Every meal I have, I always have each meal. I'll prepare at least two dishes with a lot of vegetable. The soup, I always put um, fresh simon, mongua, okay, gua, and a, 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 a daikon, uh, loba, in my soup, like soup. And at the same time, I stir fry a dish also with veg. I do gailan, I do mustard green, choy sum, I do a Chinese broccoli, a curry flour, Brussels sprout, asparagus. I use all kinds of vegetable. The more variety of vegetable you eat, the healthier the diet it is, okay? Now here I have bell pepper, I'll show you. I, I show you what I have here. Vegetarian dish, very good. I have pepper, I have ah, tau fu gong. This is pressed five spice bean curd, okay? And I have yellow squash, I have water chestnut, I have carrot, I have zucchini, I have celery. And I have assorted mushroom, look at that. I have oyster mushroom, shiitake mushroom, Sunsinge uh, one year, and also little baby mushroom. I have all kinds of mushroom. I even have leftover Brussels sprout and onion and green onion. I will show you. And I flavor this with something I grow in my garden sweet basil, Thai basil to enhance the flavor without adding too much sauces. That's the reason why I'm talking about healthy cooking and healthy diet. You are what you eat. Bang chong hao yap. If you eat junk food, don't eat healthy food, you can never be healthy. That's the reason why. Hey, look at look at me. I'm a senior. I have not weighed weighed more than one pound grow, uh, increase one pound, more than one pound in 35 years. And I feel good because I live a very simple lifestyle. I volunteer for Unlock. I do a lot of things for the community, particularly on lock, on, on lock, lock. That's what it is, okay? And then I'll cut this up and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, three, okay? This is celery. And then green onion is all of these enhance the flavor. This for color contrast. I cut it in an angle, one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five. I cut it in an angle so it looks like Diamond cut, look at that, diamond cut. Look at that, diamond cut. And then I put this right over here. And then the carrot, carrot is good, vitamin A, okay? One, two, three, beta carotene, okay? Vitamin, and then I will show you how to cut this. This is good, this is vegetable protein. Nowadays, a lot of people are talking about plant, base protein. This is soybean full of calcium and protein. And I cut it up one and two. You see, when you cut up, it, it color looks like this, it changed color. The inside is still like tofu, okay? Then I put this right over here. And then when this is all nice and ready, I enhance, cut up some sweet pepper. Leftover, use a lot of leftover vegetable, waste nothing. A senior, you know, we work so hard for our life. Never waste any ingredient. So we cut, 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 okay? We will put it all together. We have color contrast and everything. I want to show you how easy it is to remove the seed from the bell pepper. Let me show you, okay? You seesaw your knife like this, okay? You seesaw your knife. You rotate your bell pepper. In a split second. You split it. Look at how fast this is. Isn't it amazing? Okay. I will show you how to do this. I cut it up. I cut it up. I cut it up. I cut it up. And I stack them all up to save time. You do it together. Okay. Even though when you retire, you have plenty of time. But I don't want to spend too much time in the kitchen. Okay. And I want to spend more time being active. We go ballroom dancing. We go to volunteer. We go to help the people and unlock, okay? One, two, three, and four. Always diamond cut.
Okay, when this is all nice and done, now all the vegetable is ready. Now, let us cook. The seasoning we use, a lot of senior, particularly like me, we were from Southeast Asia or from China. Um, the, the Japanese use this, and the Korean use it, the Chinese use it, and the Indonesian use it, fermented bean curd, okay? Fermented soya bean. This is fermented bean curd. And ah, it looks like this inside. There's one that a plain and one with a chili powder. That means it's hot and spicy. I use my spoon and crush it. I crush it and I use this as a seasoning. And I want to show you other things that I put in the sauce. I put in a tiny bit of wine. I put in a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Oh, look at that. Sesame seed oil. Now, I want to show you if you do not use this. The reason why I use this is because it brings up a lot of childhood memory. Fu Yu. Fermented bean curd is widely used when I was growing up, my mother, okay? But if you don't want to use this, you can use a vegetarian oyster sauce. So this whole dish is vegetarian. You see this? Vegetarian oyster sauce, oh, made with mushroom, called vegetarian mushroom stir fry sauce. You can buy them in the market, okay? This is a truly vegetarian um, ingredient, okay? Now, we're gonna use tiny bit of the San Chao Yao, camellia oil, okay? One teaspoon, and then toss. No garlic and ginger required because there's a lot of flavor from here. And then I put this right here. Oh, look at that. Put all of this colorful vegetable. Mmm, beautiful. This is so good, okay? This is really good. This is it. And then, look at this alone, you can tell it's so colorful and it's healthy. You got vegetable protein, a lot of vitamin and mineral here. And then put a tiny, tiny little vegetable broth, vegetable broth. Oh, and if you want, oh, look at the sizzling sound. And then you can cover this up. Cover this up, okay? This way you can use less oil because you allow the steam to cook the vegetable. So when it's almost ready, when it's almost ready, I put a tiny bit of these wonderful Thai sweet basil. You go to a Taiwan, in Taiwan, they have Sam Bui Gai, three cup chicken, they use this. You go to any Vietnamese restaurant, they have pho, uh, rice, beef, beef noodle soup, they use this. Thailand, they use this a lot, okay? So I put this to flavor my wonderful vegetable. And then I can either use this vegetarian stir fry sauce or I use today, I use my, my bean curd, fermented bean curd, Fu Yu. This is very good, oh. Fu Yu Nam Yu, very, very good. Nam Yu is the red fermented bean curd. This is not, this is Fu Yu, Nam Yu is red. Okay, when this is done, look at that. Mm. You don't really have to thicken up, it's so beautiful. Never overcook. Look at how beautiful this is, okay? Everything is already here. Amazing. And then we're gonna serve these in these wonderful golden bowl. Look at that. I have this golden bowl. Now the key about the key about, I put it right over here. The key about cooking is not only you come up with a beautiful dish. The key of cooking is you present the dish beautifully. As senior, like us, we have plenty of time. A lot more time the young people, they have to struggle to make a living. We already have made it. Now we have to enjoy life. So I have actually a golden cup with uh, two pieces of cellophane, I mean, a spring roll wrapper. And I line them up and I bake it 
a pan fried it, okay? And a golden cup because it's New Year. Everything has to be gold. So golden cup. And then I will show you, we will serve. Now this is how you do it. How do you do this piece? Let me show you. How do you do this? You put two piece of lumpia wrap paper or spring roll wrapper and you get one of these and then one of the bowl and you put it right over here and you put another bowl right on top and you deep fry this okay if you don't have one of these this is from my restaurant my china if you don't have one of these no problem let me show you and you have one of these Use one of these. You put this in one of these, same one. Everybody have a strainer. You just do it like this. Very simple, okay? So today we show you how to do something simple, okay? In the meantime, I am gonna serve this beautiful. We put the fungus on the bottom because it's too dark, okay? But fungus, this is, Cloud ears, very healthy, very, very healthy because cloud ear naturally thins your blood. So if you have problem with high blood pressure and things, eat more of these wonderful. I just make enough and the flavor, I did not even add any extra salt or soy sauce because the fermented bean curd is already very flavorful. Now touch it up a little bit. Always do that if you have time. Touch up, just like you go to a fine dining Chinese restaurant. They always, always have the executive chef do this. It gives you that sense of beauty and the presentation. Okay, look at that. Beautiful. Amazing. Okay. Now look at that. Look at the color of this. When I put it together, look at that. I am not kidding. This is so beautiful. This is stir fry, mixed vegetable. Mar season it with fermented bean curd in a golden cup. Look at that. This is how beautiful this is. As a golden cup, I put it right over here so you can see it. So now, when we are ready, getting ready to do the other dish, may I ask if anybody have any question? Anybody yeah. have any question? Yeah, yeah. and other, and other uh, audience wants to ask you, is that any direction for um, how to bake that golden cup? Oh, well, all you have to do is uh, spray a tiny bit of the, uh, the, the spray oil, oil spray, spray it on this, and then you bake it. This mm -hmm. way, oh, and most people already have an air fryer. You put mm -hmm. an air fryer, you don't have to deep fry, you don't have to do it, just bake it. Mm -hmm. If you have an air fryer, it's, it's just like French fries. You don't have to deep fry French fries. Mm -hmm. How many of you have an air fryer? If you don't, you should buy one. I have an instant pot and I have an air fryer, so I can do a lot of dump, a lot of, a lot of bracing, a lot of stews, a lot of wonderful chong. Instead of doing it for six or seven hours, I can do it in less than an hour in an in a instant pot because a low pressure cooker. So uh, you do not have to deep fry. So the key, key is stay away from too much salt, stay away from using too much oil and no MSG, use only simple, healthy, natural, seasonal ingredient. That is the healthy diet, okay? Now, uh, the, next, also, the next, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, also that's another question for uh, using induc induction cooktop. What is your thought of um, cooking on an induction cooktop? No problem. You know why? In the future, everything will be electric, just like a car. Everything will be induction burner. In fact, uh, you probably know that um, uh, I was told recently in San Francisco, all the new restaurants can no longer use gas they have to use electric, mm. okay? So induction, when you buy the pot, if you have an induction burner, when you buy a frying pan or pot, they would indicate whether it is induction friendly. 
Mm. They would have to have metal if it is aluminum or some other, I think they, they have to have a, a piece of iron, metal. Then how can you test? You use a magnet to see, but they normally, when you buy them, they actually will tell you this is induction usable, okay? Yeah. Induction also- burner, good. It hits really up, heat up very fast and also save energy because as soon as you lift it up, mm-hmm. it disconnected. So mm-hmm. it's very safe and also save a lot of energy. Your kitchen is not as hot because you're not mm-hmm. wasting a lot of energy. When you use gas, look, look at me. When I turn on the gas, look at it. When I turn on the gas, the gas is going this way. Uh-huh. And you waste a lot of heat, a lot of energy. But when you use induction burner, only the, the point in contact, only this part, this is induction printing. You see, this mm-hmm. is aluminum, mm-hmm. but this is a piece of I, uh, iron, mm-hmm. a piece of metal iron. It's, induction burner ready. They actually tell you this induction burner ready, okay? So yeah. you only heat up the area. If you have a small pan, they only heat up the small pan. Even you put a dollar or a $200 or $100 or $20 US currency, it would not burn because mm-hmm. it only heats up the radiant heat. So mm-hmm. actually induction burner is very good. I, yeah. I use induction burner um, uh, when I, do in hotel work in hotels or cruise line. A lot of time I would be a guest chef in uh, hotels, international hotels, and also cruise. Cruise, they cannot use gas. It's safety, so all induction burner, okay? I see. Yeah, and now, uh, th- there is one more, yeah, sorry, last question. question. No so problem, uh, no uh, do you use uh, ginger in your dishes too? I do use you like- ginger all the time. I use ginger all the time, that's why, uh, I will show you, I have ginger all the time. Ginger is good. I make ginger tea. I, I would uh, bring a big pot of water and, and turn this and boil slice of ginger. And also I would uh, uh, add a tiny bit of honey and, and a lemon and a ginger lemon tea. Good for my throat because I talk a lot, okay? And I have a lot of ginger. Look at this. Look at all the ginger I have. I use a lot of ginger and garlic, okay? Okay, <clears throat> now, next dish. I have beautiful halibut. Look at this beautiful, just for you. Look at that fish, you, eat, you, eat, you should eat a lot of fish, okay? Eat a lot of fish. And then the first thing I wanna do is put a tiny bit of pepper, okay? Sprinkle a tiny bit of pepper, no salt, just a tiny bit of pepper. But if you want, you can put a tiny bit of, okay, look at that. Put a tiny bit of pepper. This is a beautiful fish. And a few drops of salt, just a few drops of salt, not much, okay? Not much at all. Okay, good. And then, Step number one, let me show you how to do this dish. This ingredient I have, okay? You have halibut, beautiful halibut filet. You have cream of corn. You have fresh corn or frozen corn. You have bread crumb. This is the Japanese bread crumb. And then you have flour and you have egg. And then I have sesame seed. I would make it interesting. I put the sesame seed right next right into the breadcrumb or the panko, this is Japanese panko, a little bit more coarse. You look at this, a little bit more coarse in the regular breadcrumb. Crumb. This is Japanese breadcrumb, okay? You can buy it in all the supermarket nowadays. So step number one, I want to cut up this. I want to have color. So I trim this, trim this, this red bell pepper. I want to have color. Color is very important, okay? Very important to have the right color. And I will, Cut this up and dice this and go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, seven. Look at that, look at nice. And I use this as a spatula to transfer food. Spatula, transfer food, and I put it right over here. Okay, that's how I transfer the food. And then I want to have some gold color. That's why I want to have this to make this a little bit more interesting, okay? And I put it all together. I stack them all up like this. I go one, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, all dice up, and this all dice, and I'll put it in a con in a little glass bowl like that. Look at that. Everything is right here, and then this is all the ingredient, and then I have this cream of corn. Now, step number one, show you how to do it. Okay. In the meantime, we will pan fry the fish. Okay. We heat up the oil. I use a little bit more oil because I want pan fry this just enough to coat this. I use about three tablespoons of oil. Okay. Oh, beautiful. And then I can cover this up with the lid. And then I get one egg, fish, egg, cream of corn, fresh corn, and pepper, and bread crumb. That's all you need. Just like you do cutlet, okay? First, step number one, salt and pepper. And then I put this, coated this with flour or cornstarch, okay? Flour, I used flour, okay? I coated this. Step number two, let me show you. Step number two, I coated this with it just like you do cutlet, okay? And then step number three, we coated it again. Look at that. Ah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, okay? We have this, okay? And then I do it one more time, okay? Now this time, bread crumb. Bread crumb, look at that. Bread crumb, look at how beautiful. Bread crumb, this is it. And then I do the same way. One and two, okay? Now tiny bit of these, and then bread crumb. Look at that. Bread crumb with sesame seed, okay? And then when this is done, I remove these, I remove these, okay? And then I will clean up my hand, okay? I will clean up my hand. Always, always make sure your working area is nice and clean like this. If you watch the Yankee Cook Show, you notice that my cutting board is always clean. My working counter always clean because this, and I learned how to cook. The master, my the master chef that I learned from is very, very fussy. Okay. Now let me show you. And this is almost ready. And then I use a tong. Okay. And then I'll pan fry this. Rather than deep fry, I pan fry. Look at that. Okay, look at that. I pan fry this. Now this is a healthy dish. Okay. And this is something everybody can learn how to do at home. And I pan fry this and I cover this and let it cook a little bit faster. Okay, always do that. In the meantime, I'll get a saucepan. I'll do that and get a saucepan and I would show you how to combine all of these together. Okay, cream of corn, all of these all of these okay and broth and water sesame seed oil wine sesame seed oil okay and a tiny bit of broth broth oh okay and i will it at the back okay so this way we can cook simultaneously oh beautiful now this is basically ready you don't want to overcook them okay oh oh look at that look how beautiful this is ah look at that okay you use medium medium heat to do it don't use high heat okay i want to make sure the fish is Cook properly, nice and golden brown like this, okay? Why I'm doing this, let me show you another thing. During Chinese New Year, you always serve ningo. This is the New Year cake, made with brown sugar 
and brown sugar and uh, long green rice flour and a tiny bit of wheat starch, okay? And then pause over here, we have New Year candy. When you visit friends and relatives, you always, always have New Year candy. Always have New Year candy, okay? Lotus candy, lotus root candy, coconut, lotus seed, candy ginger, winter melon. And then this is the Jin Dui, sesame seed, giant sesame ball. In some restaurant, they go this big. They call the canton, it's called Jin Dui Luk Luk, Gam Gan Mun Luk. Okay, and also K and also Gok Dai. This is really, really good, crispy. So now, let me show you what we are doing here. And we're gonna get ready to serve in this beautiful, wonderful, whoa, look at that. Never, never overcook, okay? When this is done, and this is also done, and I will get ready to serve these, okay? This is beautiful, nice and golden brown. And then we're gonna thicken this up. This is the sauce. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at it. Look at I'm amazing. Look at that. Oh, this is golden in a gold corn and a gold blanket. I call it in a gold blanket. This is gold blanket. And I thicken this up. A tiny, tiny bit of cornstarch. Okay. And then I will put our fish right on top of this beautiful. This is very healthy, particularly when the corn is available in season, you, you should eat more corn, okay? Look at how beautiful. And we, this is so beautiful. It's unreal. I'm gonna show you. Now, wow. look at that. Thicken it up. Always remember, one portion of cornstarch to three portion of water. Bring to a boil. Mm. This is so amazing, okay? This is so amazing. Now, I'm gonna get ready. Why I'm get this ready? I'm gonna get ready also show you how to bung a chicken, okay? And I wanna show you, this is bring to a boil already. Look at that, can you see that? It's bringing to a boil, okay? I wanna show everybody how to save money. As a senior, we don't have, you know, it, with a few exceptions, most of us don't have a lot of income. So I wanna show you how to buy one chicken and bone it and you can use the chicken to do a number of dishes. That's what I'm trying to show you, okay? Now look at that, just the rice, just the right consistency. Okay, that's right, look at that, can you see that? Just right, now that's the way I want to do it, okay? When this is nice and done, I shut it off and I put it right over here. Oh, look at that. This is served for people, okay? And then I wanna show you. In the meantime, I will get this fish. Get the fish, look at that. Get the fish right on the bottom here. And then another fish, put it right over here, okay? And then I put the, this beautiful garnish right over here. And then sprinkle a tiny bit of sesame seed. And then, as I said, we will show you some extra sesame seed right on top. Firecracker, firecracker, because it's New Year, right? And then a tiny bit of mint, I put it right over here. Look at that. This is a wonderful dish. It's a very healthy dish. Everybody can do it at home. And this is my third dish. I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, and I put this over here. So today, I have actually show you how to do the unbelievable, healthy, easy to make dishes. Now, I'll we'll show you how to bung a chicken, okay? Chef Yen, Chef Yen. Yes, um, yes. We have uh, uh, um, an audience and uh, he would like to ask you a question. So I'm just gonna okay. allow him go to ahead. talk. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Hi. Hi, Hi. how are you? Hello. 
Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm okay. I'm Chef Yan. Uh, um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You're an inspiration. Um, I'm a chef as well. I have a question. Um, would yeah. you recommend making your own panko breadcrumb or buying it? And if so, how would you make your own panko? You can easily make your own panko. The difference between panko and the regular breadcrumb you buy in the market is the regular breadcrumb, the Western style breadcrumb in the market is they're, they're the, 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 the size of the crumb is about the same size because they use the machine, okay? And the panko is different size, different shape. So that means when you do use panko, when you buy into it, it's a lot more texture contrast. You got smaller pieces, medium sized pieces and big pieces. That's why the Japanese chef use only that panko with various size. Just like a lot of chef, you are the chef. A lot of chef, you can ground your meat, but the Chinese chef, they do not ground their meat. They use two knife and chop, why? Because this way they can have an even a ground, an even cut, some smaller, some medium. So when you buy into it, have a t texture contrast rather than very uniform uh, pieces. That's the reason why uh, the same thing with panko, okay? Okay, thank you. Happy You're New welcome. Year. Happy New Year. Gong Hei Fa Choi, Shen Tai Kin Hong. And the most important thing is be safe and be healthy. I want to show you how to use a Chinese chef knife to bone a chicken to save money. Now, you are the chef that you know that in the old days, you cannot buy chicken pox in Asia. Everybody buy the chicken and they go home and they fabricate it themselves. This is the wishbone. I want to show you how easy. Normally, I can do it in 18 seconds, but I slow down. Okay? I have one cut on one side of the breastbone. Now, this is the breastbone here. Another cut on the other side of the breastbone. Can you see that? This is the breastbone. And I turn it upside down. One cut along the back. That means now the chicken already cut in half. And then I hold on to this and I use my knife. I jiggle, wiggle this, and I push this, and I hold on to this, and I push the whole thing, comes out like that, okay? Mm -hmm. This is the chicken breast. And then there's a piece of chicken, walnut sized chicken here. I used the, the tip of my knife. I turn them around and I cut. I never have to chop anything because that is another cut. And then now this piece, I cut it up and I put it right over here and I will pull this piece out. This is a beautiful tenderloin. I put it right here, okay? And I turn it to the other side and I wriggle and I feel where the joint is, I cut. And I hold onto this with the tip of my neck, and I pull, and the whole thing comes out like that, okay? And another piece. And then I twist this, and then this is the walnut side of chicken, and I cut this up and put it right here. Look at that. This is it. And then the last piece of the tender on, only right here, right over here. And then I put this and I cut this up and the whole thing comes up like this. And this chicken carcass that we use for chicken stock. This is, you use the chicken breast to make lemon chicken. You use the chicken thigh to make General George chicken, Kung Pao chicken, stir fried chicken. Then you use the wing to make wing ding. And you can use the drum to do soy sauce, uh, chicken drumstick. That means you can save a lot of money because when you buy a whole chicken, it's a lot cheaper than buying chicken pox because they charge you. They charge you money for all the labor as well as it. But now as a senior, you get, you have home, you are home and all you need is a, one of these knives that I have designed. Now, let me show you the knife. Talk about a little about the knife, okay? Here, Chef, Chef I, Yen. yes. Yes. Yeah, there is another question um, okay. um, would like to ask you is uh, one, one audience would, would like to ask you, what is your ratio of uh, mixing cornstarch and water? Okay, everybody know, you can use cornstarch, you can use tapioca starch, you can wa use water chestnut powder, you can also use a potato starch to thicken a dish. But most people in North America, most chefs use tapioca starch because they have a better binding power and they don't have water separation as fast as cornstarch. But most people at home, including myself, we cook and thicken and eat right away. And then we use cornstarch. 
always use about one portion of cornstarch to three portion of water. If you use one to one, it's too thick. Use too much, it's too watery. So one to three is a good uh, standard, okay? Sure. And also they would like to uh, ask you, how did you cut that beautiful um, cucumber? Do you think that oh. you have time to show us Oh, I'll this? show you how to cut the cucumber. Okay, no problem. In the meantime, we'll talk about knife first. Okay. There's a Chinese saying, Gong yok xin kei xi, bi xin lei kei hei. A sharp knife is one of the most important, most essential tool in any Asian kitchen. You have to cut up a lot of things, right? Let me show you. When you have a sharp knife, this is the knife, let me show you. This knife that many of you from Unlock, a staff and a friend of Unlock would have this. This is the one that I designed. Martin Yen's signature knife. When you order this, we also come with a Caesar and a cookbook, autograph cookbook, okay? Now, when you have a shot, when you have a knife, I will show you something, okay? If you are very proficient, I just talked to a good friend of mine that a chef, you know that you always hold a knife like this, free finger, index, and your thumb. And this, I designed this knife as full tank, triple rivet with perfect contour. Very few Chinese shop knife that you buy in Chinatown with this triple rivet with this contour. And then this has got a rocking motion. Very, very sharp. How do you sharpen the knife? You use a sharpening steel, okay? Now, nowadays, they have better sharpening steel. This is a rare average sharpening steel, right, nice and round. When you call a sharpening steel, basically, when you do it like that, you're basically realigning your edge. You're not sharpening it because this is not strong enough, not hard enough. You see, this is how you sharpen your knife. By sharpening it, realigning it. But this is not really sharpening. Now, this is sharpening. I have this diamond sharpening steel, diamond, flat. See this? When I cut it, I go like this. Look at, look at, one, two, three, four, five, six. Take a look at this diamond. Compared to this, this is not diamond, okay? Look at that. So. And then I want to show you when you have, when your knife is sharp enough, it's a safe knife, safe, safe knife. A sharp knife is a safe knife. Let me show you. How can you tell your knife is sharp? Let me show you. If you can cut a piece of paper like this, look at that. Look at that. This is newspaper. The newspaper is very skimpy, very hard to cut. But when your knife is sharp enough, look at this. One, two, three. Sharp knife, right? But the true test is use many full of these wonderful paper towel, very flimsy. I wanna show you how to, okay? One, okay? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, let me show you, okay? Now, let me show you. This is what I have cut, fr cut through. Look at that. Look at this, okay? Look at that. If you can have a knife that can cut through like this, get it, okay? And a sharp knife is a safe knife. Try to hold on to it properly. If you have never used a Chinese sharp knife, if you order this, I'll send you one of these. This is my finger guard. If you have never used, because when you cut, you always hold on to this, let me show you. You asked me about this question, let me show you, okay? This is cucumber. I cut a slanted angle like that, look at that. Okay, then I cut this in half, cut it in half. And then you hold on to it like that, look at that, okay? And then I go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means you have nine slices, right? It's an odd number. When you cut six slices, that means you have seven. When you get eight slices, you have nine. Now look at this. Okay? Then you ever have, have a little phoenix, like a feather of a bird. This is how they do um, cold play garnish. Then every other one, the second, you fold it in. The fourth, you fold it in. The sixth, you fold it in. And the egg, you fold it in. And that's how you do it, okay? 
Look at that. Now, can you see it? I hope you can see it. Okay? Can you see that? This is folded inside and that's all it takes. And then you have something like this. Can you wow. see that? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then when you have two of these, let me show you. When you have two of these, you can put it like this. I will show you. You have a plate here and you have two. You have one over here. You can put it on this side. You can one of these, you put it on this side. It looks beautiful like that, They're like a bird, okay? And then now we have one like this. And then we have one on the other side like this. Look how beautiful, like a feather. Now I wanna show you about this. When you have never used my knife, you order this knife, you, this is how you, you cut. When you cut, you roll your knuckle out, right? You know your knuckle out, you go, you, you, you put your blade against your knuckle. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, eight. Okay? Very, very thin slices like this. Okay? And then you use the knife as a spatula. You transfer food in put it right there. You put it right there, put it right there, okay? Put all this right there. Now, you have never used my knife or any knife. Let me show you. You put your finger here, okay? You protect your finger. So when you cut, when you cut, let me show you, okay? When you cut, you put your finger here, and then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Because you can never cut yourself. Protect your finger. So it's called finger guard. So I will send you a finger guard. So if you want to order, um, you can order through Unlock, okay? Or you can order through um, our website, um, yankingcook.com, okay? You can order yankingcook.com and check a lot of recipe. I'll be sharing with you with our good friend from Unlock. Log in, uh, either Facebook or Instagram, Chef Martin Yen. A lot of recipe, a lot of video. And I'm so honored and so privileged to work with our good friend, Helen and Stephanie on the Unlock Yen can cope with unlock. You know, so whenever we find ourselves these days, it, whether it be Golden Pond, over the Golden Gate Bridge, or somewhere else in this gold mountains we call uh, San Francisco, Gamsan Mountain. Let us remember, this is our finest hour, and we should enjoy every minute and every second of our retirement and our old golden age. Thank you. Never, sir. never say we have nothing to do. Hey, look at this. Go home and cook. Cook and share with your friends. If you have any leftover, take it to all the people that Unlock is serving those people. This way, you make your life more meaningful because you are not only having a good time cooking, you are enjoying life, you help other people. So get back to the society. That's what I'm doing. That's the reason why I work with Unlock. I want all of us enjoy what we're doing, enjoy life, and then get back to the community. That's all our good friend Helen and Stephanie and the whole team at Unlock is doing for many, many thousands of people, 200,000 meals a year. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Yeah. And one last question from the audience before we yeah. um, we close. Uh, uh, they would like to know, do you use wild uh, halibut or you use um, farm raised? Uh, of course, if I have a choice, I use free range chicken, organic natural chicken. I use wild salmon and I use wild because a lot of the time uh, you probably know that some of the farm, they use hormone. They use antibiotic and they use hormone and all kinds of stuff. And I want to stay away from those things. I'm a, a food technologist. I study food science from UC Davis. So I also know that a lot of food, particularly processed food, are loaded with the additive and a preservative. So I think it's always better to get something organic. Now for, to celebrate Chinese New Year, 
we presented to you a beautiful flower made with watermelon. Look at that, how beautiful. And then made with radish, peony, wow. roses, all wow. of these just for you. And maybe one day we can do a class on uh, garnishing. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, but, but you need to have certain tools. So we send you uh, where to buy some of the tools, then we can do something together. But in oh. the meantime, today, I'm showing you how to celebrate Nuna New Year with good food and share all of these good luck and good fortune and good food with all your friends and neighbors. And of course, now you cannot share with your neighbors or friends, <laughs> but share with your family. Share with your family. And then you have some. Ask Uber to come and pick it up and take it to our good friend in Unlock. And they are very hungry. I can tell Helen and Stephanie is very hungry. So make sure you cook something and send it to them. And just put it in their doorstep. Don't even have to say hello to them. Don't even have to see them. Just put it over there. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Yan. Yes, you are making us so hungry. <laughs> I can't I wait. Can't too. wait to go go get some food. <laughs> <laughs> well, come by, come by. Um, I put the food. You know, in my front door, and you can pick it up and go home. Uh, it's free of charge. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, thank you, uh, everyone, for uh, being here tonight. And um, thank you for joining us for to tonight's show. This is uh, wonderful to see you all here. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, this show will be um, will be uh, uh, online on online tomorrow on our Facebook and uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you like to know more about Unlock, uh, uh, visit, visit our website unlock.org. And we will see you next time because uh, uh, Chef Yen is so kind and nice and really want to give back to the society. So we will continue to have this uh, cooking demonstration. And um, yeah, just stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone for participating. Thank you. Bye-bye.